Hello and welcome back to Media B Color Lab. Today we are diving into how to create this contrasty cinematic film look in DaVinci Resolve. We'll be working with DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools along with two of my favorite plugins. Dehancer Pro for film emulation and Contour for fine-tuned contrast control and split toning. So let's jump in and bring this cinematic look to life. Let's begin by reviewing the project settings, uh, starting with the master settings. Given that the footage is in 4K, I have configured the resolution uh, accordingly. In my color management, I've set my color science to DaVinci YRGB, uh, as I prefer a CSD workflow. For my timeline color space, I'm using DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, and my output color space is set to Reg 709, uh, Gamma 2.4. These settings ensure a flexible and accurate grading workflow. So let's move on to the next step. First off, let's add our input and output CSD nodes uh, to accurately interpret the camera data. To do this, we'll go to the effects panel and apply a color space transform to our first node. Since it's red camera footage, uh, we'll select red white gamut RGB as our input color space and red log 3 G10 as our input gamma. For our output color space, uh, we want a large color space to perform our color grading most effectively. So we'll select DaVinci white gamut intermediate. In the input CSD node, we can skip the tone mapping uh, to avoid initial compression of highlights and shadows. Next, we'll create our output CSD uh, because we need to convert WG White Gamut Intermediate to Reg 709, uh, the standard for broadcast and online media. To do this, let's add another serial node and apply color space transform. Our input color space this time is DaVinci White Gamut and input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Our output color space will be Reg 709 and the output gamma will be uh, Gamma 2.4. For the output CSD node, we now want to enable tone mapping uh, to ensure our highlights and shadows are correctly compressed and fall naturally into place for a more filmic look. Here you can select your choice of tone mapping, uh, but I usually go with DaVinci's own tone mapping algorithm and set the maximum output to 10,000 nits. So at this point, we should have a neutral looking image ready for grading. It's between these two nodes uh, within the DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate color space where all the color grading will happen. Now, let's start by adding two nodes for primary grading. One will be for contrast and another for balance. Remember, these two nodes typically account for about 80% of the grading process, uh, making them essential for achieving a professional look. If you want a more in-depth uh, tutorial on contrast and balance adjustments, check out my detailed guide by clicking the link in the top right corner. Okay, back to grading. We'll start with contrast adjustment. Let me switch to the waveform scopes to ensure we don't crush the shadows or clip highlights. For this adjustment, I'll use the curve tool. By the way, I'm working with my mini panel, uh, but you can achieve the same results uh, using a mouse. Good. For the balance adjustment, I'll switch to the vector scope to ensure accurate color balance. This time I'll be using the global wheel in the HDR panel to fine tune the overall color balance of the image. Let's see the difference. Looking good. Now let's move on to the look development and film emulation. For this I'll add three parallel notes at the end of our node tree. I'll use all three for Dehancer Pro. By separating them, I can apply different effects separately and control them individually. First, let's add Dehancer Pro to the first node. I'll set the color space to DaVinci Intermediate to ensure accurate processing. By default, uh, this plugin uh, includes several built-in effects, but I prefer to start with a clean slate. So, to quickly disable all effects, we can simply scroll down and click the Disable All Tools button. I also set the quality to high since we always want the best possible output. Now to keep things simple, I'll copy these settings and I'll paste them into the other two parallel nodes. Okay, in the first node, I want to apply the Codec 2383 film print emulation. Look at how it instantly transforms the image. 
This tells us why so many films are color graded using this iconic print profile. To refine the look, let's adjust the target white point slightly to get the best balance. Here you can also experiment with the analog range limiter to see if it suits your taste. Now, moving on to the second dehancer node, I'll apply a film negative profile. This time I'm going with the legendary Kodak Vision 3 250D, one of the most widely used film stocks in cinematography. As you can see, it has a beautiful natural contrast, rich color rendition, and a slightly softer roll-off in highlights compared to digital footage. Here, to fine-tune the look, you can play with the push and pull slider to match the mood you are going after. By the way, a quick reminder. If you are interested in purchasing the Hanster Pro, you can use the code MEDIAB10 for a 10% discount. I think while DaVinci Resolve's latest tools like Film Look Creator is an excellent tool for film emulation, uh, the Hanster Pro remains a key part of my workflow uh, because of its authentic film characteristics and also deeper control over various effects like film grain, halation and blue. Alright, back to grading. In the last dehancer note, I'll add halation and bloom to enhance the cinematic feel. These effects help replicate the way light interacts with film, creating a softer and more organic look. Next, I want to make use of DaVinci Resolve's Film Look Creator as well, to improve our look even further. For these contrast looks especially, I like the settings that come with the default 65mm preset, so I'll stick with it. Now, before we move on, uh, let's take a moment to address the shadows shown in the waveform. They seem a bit too close to zero, which might be crushing some details. So, uh, let's lift them slightly for a more balanced look. One of my favorite tools for this is the Expand tool in Dehancer Pro. I'll tweak the black point here to gently raise the shadows. Let's take a look at the difference. As you can see in the waveform, the black point is now lifted slightly, giving us a bit more detail in the darker areas. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can also go back to your contrast node and lift the shadows there instead. Both methods work well, uh, so it's really up to your workflow and personal preference. Next, I'll add another note for the soften and sharpen effect. As you know, I love using this tool because it helps refine the image in a subtle yet powerful way. Let's lower its output strength uh, to our taste. Perfect. Okay, now, as a bonus, I want to use Colin Kelly's contour plugin today to enhance the look with some more split toning. Let's add it right before our output CST for maximum control over the final color balance. One of the great things about contour is its ability to shape contrast in a more nuanced way. Just like we did with Dehancer Pro's Expand tool, you can also use the contrast sliders here to lift the shadows uh, if you want. In the split toning section, uh, let's fine tune our shadows and highlights to bring out the final look. See how these small adjustments instantly add more depth and mood to the image? Looking perfect. I love this tool. Here we can also tweak the hue, density and saturation to dial in the perfect balance and achieve the cinematic tone we are going after. And there it is! Another cinematic film look crafted in DaVinci Resolve using a combination of built-in tools and powerful plugins. If you found this tutorial helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next and as always, keep creating! I'll see you in the next one.